So there's this interesting thing some people talk about, you know, what they eat for breakfast and that kind of stuff and how they, you know, enjoy eggs or maybe they have things like, I don't know, cereal or waffles or pancakes, all stuff I would love to really eat in the morning. Um, but the reality of my situation is I'm so nauseous for like the first five, six hours of the day most of the time especially lately that I can't actually eat anything. So I drink a lot of this boost. This is a vanilla one and yeah, I put it in my coffee, which I'm going to do right now and I drink it. And then that way it's kind of like I'm having a, a cappuccino, which I haven't had in a really long time. And yeah, I don't know. I enjoy it. It's one of those, one of those things that I end up doing. I don't know if other people do that. I don't know if that's something you're supposed to do or not. Um, but I find that it just kind of helps me get that protein and nutrients into my body in the morning. Not recommending anyone do that by any means. I'm just saying that's what I do and I find it helpful for myself. Now, if I'm nauseous, why do I drink coffee? Well, I don't wake up if I don't drink coffee. I have to inject myself with anti-nauseas. So, anti-nauseas? Anti-nausea meds. <laughs> so that I'm able to drink the coffee. And yeah, sometimes I can't eat at all throughout the day um, without vomiting. So having things like Boost, I have a vanilla, I have a chocolate, I've got a, which are like more of a creamy texture. And then I have one that's more like juice, which is a peach flavored one. And I use that one sometimes in the afternoons if I'm feeling like, oh, I can't drink something that's kind of got a milky texture kind of thing. And I find that to be helpful for getting some sort of nutrients in. Now I have had doctors um, and like nutritionists and dietitians and stuff uh, recommend like protein powders. But for me, there's usually like one ingredient in protein powders that always causes a problem. So that is an issue for me. It's too bad there's not something that's like, I don't know, a low histamine kind of one. But at the same time, people with mass activation, we all have such different triggers when it comes to fragrances or foods or prescription drugs that it makes it really hard even to navigate um, visiting someone else that has mast cell activation as an example. So like I was talking to someone recently and I had said how I I can't be around most fragrances. Like there's a lot of fragrances I just can't be around. And so I've just gone 100% scent free to avoid getting um, hives and rashes and I've got a bit of a, a red spot there. Um, and that sort of stuff. So I switched my laundry soap, I switched my body wash, I switched my soap that I wash my dishes with, my hand soap. I don't use scented deodorant. Um, I just keep everything fragrance free. And I noticed that the amount of body swelling that I had went down substantially, which is really nice because when you look like you're nine months pregnant um, out of nowhere and your abdomen's super hard, you know that's not a normal thing. Yes, gastroparesis is also a thing um, and leaky gut, but at the same time, when you have mass activation, you can get swelling anywhere in your body, face, neck, chest, butt, legs, arms, fingers, toes. Like it, it's very, very weird. I just hit my mic, sorry. It's a very weird disease that way because I've had random swelling where my nose has been really big or like just like underneath of my face has been really big and just made me have no neck. Um, I've ended up with weird swelling in one arm. So there's like a lot of a lot of different symptoms even that everyone with mass activation experiences. So there's that. So it's a very like individualized journey for each person. So if someone posts on the internet, you know, I, I eat low histamine all the time and then someone's like, oh, okay, but you know, I have what you have, but I can eat tomatoes all the time, or I can eat uh, nightshades all the time. Um, so why don't you try them? And then it's kind of like, why are we suggesting to other people to try high histamine foods if that's not something they're comfortable with? And it's also potentially not safe for other people. So that's kind of an important thing to take note of because when we're living with something like mass activation, we can't 
necessarily diverge from our our diet. Now, I know there's some people that will only eat a select number of foods, and I totally understand that. Like I was in that state myself, but I also had to start eating different stuff because I was getting I was getting quite thin. I ended up doing this uh, low histamine diet for a while, and I ended up losing quite a bit of weight. Oh, I don't know how long ago that was. Maybe, maybe eight years ago. I don't know. And I lost quite a bit of weight and I was very thin and like I felt great, but I was very thin. So if I would have gotten like hospitalized, I would have had no weight to lose while being in the hospital, which is something I'm trying to do is put weight on so that if I do get hospitalized and they do happen to have to starve me, which has happened in the past because I had pancreatitis in the past, um, then that way I'll be able to, you know, potentially lose weight in the hospital and then come out doing okay so that's something that maybe some people don't think about like when you get hospitalized um you do tend to lose weight not everybody but for myself pretty much anytime i have been hospitalized i've lost weight and it's because i'm on like iv hydration stuff the whole time they're putting stuff into the bags that's pretty much all i'm getting sometimes like when i had pancreatitis i couldn't eat for four days so that was hard and I lost a lot of weight. Like I was really skinny after and I tried to gain weight back and then that's a process in itself. So it's kind of something I try to try to think about is like, I need to put some weight back on because I don't want that kind of stuff to keep happening when I do get hospitalized. Not kind of weight. Um, I don't want to end up getting worse because I have none of that weight as like a, a safety net, so to speak. I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. But anyways, back to like symptoms and foods and all that kind of stuff. Like everyone's so different. So that's part of the reason I wanted to make this video was just to talk about like the differences between people with mast activation, idiopathic anaphylaxis, mastocytosis, that sort of thing, because we may not all have the same triggers. So you might talk to someone who has mass activation, that, that isn't me, and they might be able to be around, I don't know, gain laundry detergent, which I would be surprised, but who knows, right? Maybe there's someone that's actually fine with it and they're, they're reactive to all of the natural products, right? It's a very weird disease because a lot of the time your body thinks it's allergic to the stuff that you're not actually allergic to, but it causes anaphylaxis or anaphylactoid responses, which involves three or more body systems. So it doesn't always have to be throat closure. It could be, you know, facial swelling. It could be diarrhea and vomiting. It could be migraine as well. And so once you start piling on these symptoms, you're in anaphylaxis, even though your throat's open. So that's something that there's a misconception about is anaphylaxis in general. Because um, most people are like, oh, it just means your throat closes. And I don't mean to say just, but like it's having your throat close is a very scary feeling. Having it do this jumpy thing where it's kind of like, I don't know, pulsating. And then it's like, oh, it's, I feel like it's going to close. It's a very scary feeling. Uh, definitely not fun. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody but there are multiple symptoms that go into anaphylaxis so that's something that people need to be aware of and everybody with the disease is so different thank you so much for watching my video i hope that you have a wonderful day i'm gonna go drink my coffee and maybe record another one we'll see take care Bye bye